Yo, what's going on guys? Today I'm teaching you all about the Use Optimistic Hook, a brand new experimental edition in Next.js 13. Now, if you've never heard of Optimistic Updates, this is gonna be a really important video for you. All it simply is, is when we click on a interactive element, for example, a button to increment a number, we typically as a user want to see that number increment immediately. We don't wanna to have to wait for it to contact the API, increment the number on the database, and then return the brand new number. Otherwise, what we end up doing is selecting the same button several times, there's a delay, we then think that we've added one to our value and then really we've clicked it nine times and then it's added nine to the initial value. It's not what we expect from an app and this is how we go ahead and fix it. So here I have a demo Next.js 13 app called the Use Optimistic Demo and we have a normal counter and an optimistic counter, okay? So take a careful look because you might not spot it the first time. When I go ahead and click on the plus right here, this will go ahead and make an API call to the back end. And I'm going to show you how we do all of this. We're using server actions. If we go ahead and do that right now, I click, right? So every time I click, you can see there's a slight delay between that counter occurring, right? If I open up the network inspector and I go to the throttle tab and I click on fast 3G, now we're going to emphasize the problem. So if I click on plus, you can see that there's a 591 millisecond delay. So every time I click it, you can now see the effect of that problem that I'm talking about a lot more. When I click it, what you end up having is the user will click it several times and then look what happens. It goes ahead and causes several requests to happen, a big delay. Users do not like this behavior. Imagine you're on Instagram, you hit the like button and then there's a delay, okay? So how do we typically fix this? Well, we use optimistic UI updates and this is where the use optimistic hook comes in really nice. If you've ever used use SWR, you'll be quite familiar with how this works. On the optimistic counter, you can see it's the opposite. When I click it, boom, straight away it works. Now notice how even on the back end, if I was to show you that again, even if I click it, let's say three times, the UI updated immediately, even though the requests weren't even finished. So what we do with an optimistic update is we're essentially guessing the value at the moment the user interacts with the element. So in this situation, we've essentially programmed it so that way, when I press the plus button, it will take the existing value add one and that's what we assume is next value if it's a more difficult example for example messages it will take the current message add that to the state in an attempt to basically guess that that will be the response that comes back now if any issue did occur you can handle it accordingly but in this case it's giving the user that immediate effect in which we expect as a user when we're interacting with the website. Now you can see the total difference between optimistic updates. So if I go ahead and click this a bunch of times, you can see it's a lot more of a nicer experience. And then on the back end, you can see when it finally updates in the server. So this value here is actually the true value when it updates in the server. But on the front end, the user can see that there's an immediate update. And then on the back end, it will come through when it's ready. So I'm going to show you how you can build all of this and how simple it is with the use optimistic hook. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to start a new project. So let's head over to a Next.js 13 starter template. Now, as you can see, I've got a page, I've got my layout file is very empty, and I've got a globals just with the base tail in CSS. Now, ignore all the other files, I'll run you through that very shortly. So in this tutorial, we actually created a server action. Now, if you don't know about server actions, then definitely go ahead and check out the video that's popping up on the screen right now, where I teach you how to use server actions inside of an Next.js 13 app. They essentially allow us to make server mutations very, very easy inside of our Next.js apps. So here we have a server action and all it is doing is it takes an amount. So think of it as a very simple function. It takes an amount, and it makes a post request to the back end. And all it's doing is it's passing that amount in the body of the request. And then we're going to increment our likes on the back end. So we have a simple API endpoint here at forward slash likes. And then we're going to go ahead and increment the back end value. And notice how we don't do anything with the response that comes back. That's because we're using the revalidate tag to go ahead and make sure that the front end updates. Again, I explain all of this in the server actions video, which popped up on the screen earlier. So in that case, let's go to our backend API to show you how it's working. Well, in this case, we have a simple in-memory store to store the likes. Yes, if you restart your server, this value will reset 
$2.99, but it's perfect to demonstrate what we're trying to do here. This could be a database value. It could be anything in that sense, right? Then we have a get request. The get request simply returns the likes whenever we request to forward slash likes. So this is using the new Next.js 13 root.ts file syntax. And then we have a post request, okay? So if we make a get request to this, we simply get back the likes. But if we make a post request, then what we do is we get the amount from the request.json body, okay? So this is how you actually get the body from a request inside of Next.js 13 root.ts files. Then we're going to check if you did pass an amount in. So it's always good to be defensive. Then we're going to go ahead and increment the likes by the amount. So we're going to pass the amount to a number value and then we're going to increment our likes with it. And then we're going to return the likes, okay? So once that's done, we then need to create a front end to go ahead and load that in. So let's do a very simple fetch call. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and fetch the latest likes value inside of our homepage, okay? Now, as this is by default a server component, we can simply make this an asynchronous function and we can go ahead and make a fetch call like so. So this is simply a fetch call, which goes ahead and makes a get request to the forward slash likes URL. And then you can see we're using the no cache. Now I am going to be making a Next.js caching video at the time of this video. If it's available, you'll see it on the screen. If not, there's plenty of tutorials out there, but I will be dropping it very shortly. Do not worry. And then what we're going to do is we're going to give it the Next.js tag of likes. And this allows us to revalidate it once we've gone ahead and made that mutation on our server action. And you can see here, once we created that mutation, so once we went ahead and manipulated the value on the back end, we can simply revalidate the tag. And what this means is on the front end, it will refetch this fetch request. So we will always get the latest likes value. So fairly straightforward example. Let's go ahead and just simply put that on the screen right now. So if I was to go ahead and pop in the likes, and we're going to simply run our app by going to our output and running npm run dev. So once you've done that, you get our perfect demo here with 99 being pulled from the back end. Okay, so next up, we're going to go ahead and implement a very simple counter. Okay, so the counter I've gone ahead and created for us. So in this case, it's a simple client component, and that is depicted by this use client directive at the top. It imports our server action at the top like so. It simply takes likes as a prop. Now, as you can see, all we have here is a H2, which says normal counter, and then two buttons and a P tag in the middle, which says the likes. And then we simply passed in the adjust likes on the first minus button, and then we adjust the likes by one if we hit the plus button. So you're just simply incrementing and decrementing based on what button you click. So let's go ahead and give that a try right now by simply popping it in like so. So we can get rid of that and we can go ahead and type in counter and pop it in like so. And we have to simply pass in our likes as our props. Now, you'll most likely run into this error right here. This is because server actions are an experimental feature. And in fact, we're going to be using a lot of experimental features, including the use optimistic hook. To get this working, you need to go into your Next.js. At the time of this video, it is an experimental feature. By the time that you might be watching it, it might not be. So it's always worth checking. But in this case, we're simply going to go ahead and enable it as an experimental feature. Once you've done that, you need to go ahead and actually restart your terminal. Now, it does actually restart for you. I don't always trust it, so I recommend you restart it anyway. So now you can see we've got our normal counter with a bit of basic styling. And then if I go ahead and increment now, we will make a call to that backend request. So now if I go ahead and do that, you can see it makes the request and it seems pretty fairly like fast when we look at this, right? Again, that is because we have not throttled the connection and it's a very simple request right now. All we're doing is adding one in a request. It's very lightweight, but if you simply throttle even to a fast 3G connection, you will notice a bit of a delay when you press it. So every time I click here, you can notice that's still not immediately responsive. And if I click several times, you're going to get this horrible situation that users just will hate. Okay. So in this case, each one 600 milliseconds on a fast 3G is simply unacceptable. This is where optimistic updates are lifesavers. Okay. So let's go ahead and change this component to actually make it a uh, optimistic counter instead. So in fact, I'm going to keep the existing counter so you can actually see this as a reference. And then I'm going to show you what an optimistic counter looks like. So you can see here, it's actually ver not much code. So in this case, this code is about 21 lines of code. And here we have 29. So it's very simple to go ahead and actually change it to a uh, optimistic component. 
And the first thing you notice is we have this experimental import at the top. So it's experimental underscore use optimistic and we're renaming it as use optimistic. So in the case that you're watching this and it's still an experimental feature, this is what you the way you have to import it. So exactly the same setup. So we have the props being the likes being passed in as props, but we're simply calling this optimistic counter. Now, a few things that we want to take note of. We've got our function here, which is triggered on the on click instead. So when I click the minus, instead of directly calling our server action adjust likes, now I'm calling this new function update likes. And that's because I want to have this additional step here, which is add optimistic likes. And then we have our optimistic likes being rendered out instead of the prop, as you could see here. So a couple of differences here. The normal counter object, we have a simple likes being passed in. This is the prop that we pass in. In the optimistic counter, we pass in the likes. However, these likes are used to actually initialize our optimistic state, which I'll discuss in a second. On the screen, we render something called optimistic likes, okay? And the second difference is our in our normal component, we are calling the server action directly. And in our optimistic component, we are calling update likes because we want to run this additional add optimistic likes function, okay? So we want both of these to execute in that way as opposed to just simply directly calling the server action in itself, okay? So let's go ahead and show you how to set up a optimistic component. First thing we need to do is initialize our use optimistic hook. Now this gives us two values. It gives us the optimistic likes itself and it gives us the function add optimistic likes. And we can call this a mutator function, okay? Let's just call it the mutator function. And in this case, we pass in two arguments to the use optimistic hook. The first one is likes. This is essentially how we initialize our optimistic likes variable. So this is gonna be the value that you pass in as props. Now, in this case, this is a number. So therefore, the next argument, which is actually a callback function, which takes state and amount, and it returns a value, this is known as a reducer function, okay? So what we're actually doing here is the state infers the type th that we pass in here so if i was to pass in for example messages and if you look on the documentation on the website where they explain the use optimistic hook they give the example of optimistic messages and in this case if we pass in an array you can see the return type is going to be an array because what we have to do is whatever we initialize it with for example likes here is a number we have to make sure that the value that we guess that it's going to become after an interaction takes place, it still has to be the same data type. So if I if the number is initially one and I click the plus button, what we would expect here is it to become two, which is still a number. So this means that your state would actually infer the same data type as the number or as the data type that you pass in as your initial value. So in this case, we pass in the number. So the state would represent the current number. If it was a messages array, it would represent the current messages state array. The second value is the amount or the modifier value that we're passing in. So in this case, when we call add optimistic likes, this amount will be passed in here, okay? So if this, if we were doing an increment, for example, I pressed update likes with the plus one, then in that case, the current value would be, let's just say 99, because that's the value we start with. The amount would be one, and then I'm going to guess that the next value is going to be 99 plus when we've got, we're uh, passing the number into a number value here. So it'd be 99 plus one. And then that would basically return. So it's basically doing an implicit return. So whenever you have one line of code, you should know this little trick where you basically can return like so. So if you ever have just one line, you don't need to do all of this extra code. You can simply just have a nice little call like so, and it's super clean. That means like an implicit return. Okay, so in this case, we now are returning and that's where we do the guesswork, right? So in the example of a message, you can see here, what we have is this is an array of messages. And then here we are returning an array. So you can see the square brackets denote that we are actually returning an array, but we're spreading out the current messages state. So this will include all of the current messages that were in the existing state. And then it's appending another message. So in this case, you can see the message is part of that new object and that's the new message contents. And then here they're actually adding another property called sending. Right. So you can see here, if it's an array, you handle it like so. In our case, we're just doing a very simple demonstration, which is a number. Right. So now that we've done that, we need to go ahead and use our special optimistic value and mutator. Right. So in this case, let's see how we do that. So we've got our button 
here and all we do is we have an arrow function which says update likes and we pass it in the same value minus one or normal one okay you can add in two if you want to double it and so forth or add in two and so forth okay so in this case we make it an asynchronous function which takes the amount and instead of just doing the direct adjust likes like we did in this function now we're going to call our add optimistic likes which will optimistically add it locally so we get that immediate ui response and then it's going to do this in the background so this is where it actually goes to the database changes the number on the back end but adding it optimistically first means our local state is going to get updated immediately so this means the user's ui gets that immediate instant effect of being updated as where the typical one took time to update because we had to wait for it to revalidate the tag and then it would cause a refetch and then it would be passed through again and it causes the component tree to re-render which is a bit of a pain we have to wait for all of that in this case we simply add the optimistic likes which goes ahead and gets passed down here straight away and then on the back end it's going to go ahead and do the adjust likes thereafter so let's give this a try and we should see it working in all of its glory so let's go ahead and do optimistic uh, counter pull it in and then we have to go ahead and pass in the likes in the exact same way okay so we now have a very nice example if we were to go ahead and clear out our console we can see the normal counter on the top and we can see the uh, optimistic count on the bottom and i'm still throttling it to 3g to make sure you can see this example very clearly okay so let's go ahead and increment the optimistic counter boom immediately there okay now i want you to pay attention it's still taking 600 milliseconds on the back end but every time i click it you can see it's immediately taking effect and this is what's really nice here okay and then once all the requests are done you will see the final fetch value being called okay so not only is it deduping those requests it's doing it in a really nice way where the user gets a perfectly responsive ui and then when it only then realizes that, okay it's you, you've done you finished then it will go ahead and give you that refetch right so that's honestly the effect well that's actually the ui that we would want as a developer right so in this case if i go back and do it this way you can just see how horrible that ui is so if i click it now we have to wait for it and it's just not a great experience whereas an optimistic uh, component you can see here immediately has that interaction immediately has that effect now this is how big apps like instagram have immediate feedback right so it's worth really paying attention here and understanding that when you hit the like button on instagram you're not going ahead and actually doing a normal interaction, right? If we did that, then really what you'd be doing is you'd be clicking the like button. It would take some time to hit Instagram servers, update the value and show that you're now liking it. Then it would finally reflect on your screen, which would just be a horrible user experience. So in this case, what you're actually seeing in your day-to-day -day usage of apps is most likely optimistic UI updates. So now you know the magic behind how they get that feature working. So this has been your breakdown of the brand new use optimistic hook and if you want to go ahead and copy this for yourself to give it a try which i highly recommend then i definitely recommend that you use the cli tool mpx create next app at latest to go ahead and install things in that perfect way then you can go ahead and copy the files that i've done to go ahead and give it a try i'd highly recommend once you've done that try experimenting by using different data types and actually going ahead and providing different examples so here we did a very simple example of a number on the back end but i would highly recommend that you actually go ahead and check out the documentation yourself and try and replicate an example such as the one that they've given here where you're essentially trying for a message for example to optimistically update the ui in a message sense right so you're before it's even sent off to the back end the user gets an immediate response on the front end now if anything does go wrong you can actually send back an error state and then you can show an error ui accordingly so that's the benefit of doing it this way but this is something which I really do recommend every developer, especially if you're trying to become the latest and greatest in Next.js, learns. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more Next.js tutorials just like this, then make sure you smash the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed, because a lot of you are actually watching these videos and haven't subscribed yet, which is crazy. And make sure to hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss more awesome gems just like this. As always, guys, I will see you in the next video. Peace.